Okay, stream level excellent. Just started my stream and I think we should be popping up on YouTube in a second. So welcome to How to DJ with Ableton Live episode two. We're gonna review beat matching and take a look at warping as well as some stuff to live loop. There we have the stream. Okay. Yes, stream is up. Let me just turn off my other little monitoring so it doesn't get in the way. I think we're all good. Yeah. All right, full screen live. So I'm working with OBS going into Ableton. I mean, having Ableton go into OBS and YouTube. So what are we talking about today? Well, this is a template for how to DJ with Ableton Live. We got two decks and you can do it only with a laptop. So you're gonna see me type some keyboard keys on here. That's why the camera's, camera's pointed down. And the only thing I'm using my mouse for in this DJ set is to run with the crossfader. That is so you can take your laptop and play from your stereo headphone output jack or just a one, two output from your audio interface. Very simple audio outputs and play a set of tracks as long as you have them warped and you're ready to go with the set list of, you know, you have to know your own tracks. But even when you're doing that, you can actually beat match with another DJ without using any kind of sync. Like if they're on CDJs or vinyl, or if you're beat matching to someone at a house party and they're playing from who knows what, uh, let's look at how to do that. So uh, the first thing is for Fabian, we had a question on mapping and um, reassigning controllers. So what you do is enter key mapping mode. You can see the Q and the W pop up on the track status display. That's what we're gonna use to see our clip view. Let me take a quick run through what's in this project so you can see what's going on. I'm not gonna use the mouse to launch the track. I have a scene select controls with the square brackets. If you happen to have a like a Spanish keyboard or something, when you enter key mapping mode, these are on the side by the master channel right above the headphone cue. So for up and down, you could map O and P, but I like using square brackets because on my keyboard that works for me. So I am gonna move up and down and launch the track on deck one using the nine. And here we go. Now, how do I beat match this track If I want this to come in on another set, right? Well, the first thing we didn't want to do is have the metronome running just to show you how this works. There's my metronome in live. Uh, let's do this. We're going to grab a QuickTime file. This is playing totally outside live, no sync, no communication of live and QuickTime or anything. What I want to do is beat match with this track, Beg It. Um, Pretend that this QuickTime track is another DJ on a DJ mixer playing from a CDJs. I have no idea what BPM they're doing. I don't really need to know, need to know what BPM it is. So what I'm gonna do is go to live, turn on the metronome with the M key, wait for a beat and press play. And, and ask the question, does my metronome line up with QuickTime? I can hear it doesn't. My metronome is too slow. So what am I gonna do to fix that? If you're just coming in, we're beat matching right now. So QuickTime represents a vinyl record or a CDJ or some other DJ that you're not synchronized with at all. What I wanna do is be able to tap tempo in live. So in key mapping mode, you can see I have tap, I have the letter T. On metronome, I have the letter M. And then on phase nudge, I have Z and X. These allow you to slightly speed up or slow down the BPM of Ableton to match what the other DJ or what the other music is doing. So going back to QuickTime, I'm gonna play this track and come and tap tempo in live to find out what BPM is this track at. I don't care what the number is, I just want live to be at the same BPM. Here we go with the other DJ. And in live. I'm just hitting the T on the keyboard. Looks like it's about 126. All right, now activate metronome and play. Now my metronome sounds a little fast. What I'm doing is listening to the live metronome and asking the question, does it match the track in quick time? This is where I use phase nudge on Z and X.
Now you wait and see if the metronome is gonna drift or not. Feels like it might be a little bit slow. But that's close enough that I can launch a track. So I'm gonna turn off the metronome, pick out one of my tracks, and I wanna show you the process of launching and introducing it. Here we go. can hear this track in live. Just to show you what music is coming in. Now in live, I'm gonna be ready with phase nudge in case I need to get the track working when it comes in. my track coming in. It's kind of cool that my track is coming in with the vocal loop at the breakdown of the Beggin song. Now I'm using phase nudge to keep it beat matched. Turn down the other DJ a little bit. Ride the build up. And now my track is all the way in. That might have been a little bit of a rough example because you're not looking at a DJ with decks and a Pioneer mixer and you know a crossfader and stuff. But to review the process, when you're mixing with another DJ, what you have to do is First, come to live and tap tempo with the T key. You just listen to the other music and tap tempo to get the metronome of live synchronized with the other music. Once that's done, you're ready to launch a track on the beat with the other music, and then you can listen to see how your track flows, feel if it's synchronized or not, and if you need to keep the BPM uh, matched, use the phase nudge. Now, the longer you hold these down, the more effect it has. So let's go back to this track. Oh, I did a tap tempo and changed it too much. We are around 126. Listen to what happens when I hold down phase nudge with the X key. Listen to what happens. It goes faster and faster, and I can hear that I'm on repitch mode. So let's change our warp mode to complex so it doesn't repitch. If I hold down Z, it's going to slow down. And the more you hold it down, the slower it gets. So when it's time to beat match tracks, let's do it again with this track called The One. I'm gonna set live back to 120. Pretend I don't know what tempo Begin is at. So I'm gonna bring in the track called The One and match it with Begin. These are two tracks I got from my uh, one of my DJ students. I asked her to bring in her favorite music. She brought in these two tracks with some Taylor Swift. She's 10 years old. I thought it was cool that she's listening to this. All right, let's leave the volume of Began a little bit low in this stream so you can hear what's happening. So I got a track on right here. I got a beat match live to get the Ableton, Ableton metronome working. Here we go. I can see the tempo is hovering around 126. It's settled in kind of like at the right tempo or it's at a similar tempo. Now I'm gonna listen to the track and wait for the right moment to launch my music to get it going just on a downbeat. We have a clash of two different lyrics. So really, it's kind of hard to beat match tracks when they've got vocals going on. 
but I think we're in the right place with the BPMs and I have my secret phase nudge keys available. So let me show you how I would actually make this mix. I would be mixing at the end of the other track to start bringing in my vocals at the right moment. So let's get ready to start over with the one and try to launch it at a point where there's not a lot of lyrics happening in the other track. left on the track. record is ended and the new record is in. And notice what I did there was uh, I selected the EQs on deck two and I cut the kick drum out because at the end of the track I was beat matching to, we were in a section with just kick drum and bass and hi-hats. So I was mixing the, the beats from Began with the vocals from the one, I wanted to cut the bass out of the one to make it easier to mix. Let's try that again with just a little example here. One, two, three, four. Use my phase nudge to get it locked in. So the, the chords from the one are on top of the beats from Began. drops in. So that was for Fabian who asked a question about beat matching and what are the extra controls on the template. Again, when we enter key mapping mode, which you can do with the key button up here, let's go full screen again. We've got the letter T on tap tempo. T. We've got M for the metronome and for phase nudge, we have Z and X. Now I use those because I like these keyboard keys and they work for me, maybe because I'm left-handed and that's just the way I like it. But you can reassign those functions to any keys you want. The point is, when you want to beat match with another DJ, here's what you do. Listen to the other track, tap tempo, launch your track on the beat, a warped track, then use phase nudge to keep it synchronized long enough to make the mix, and then you can exit out of their track into all of your Ableton tracks, and when they're warped, you don't need to worry about beat matching anymore because they are already warped. So what if you want to do some live looping and catch like the end of one track and mix it with the beginning of another? Let me give you an example. Let's listen to the end of the one. Okay, right here. Maybe I wanna loop that part on top of something else, but it's really short. That's not long enough. I would have to be really ready to make a mix with a little four bar loop. And a lot of pop music has a four bar intro or a four bar exit. They just get right to the point with a three minute track that could be house tempo, but it doesn't have a super long intro. It doesn't have an extended mix because it's not on vinyl, it's made for digital. So what I wanna do is create a loop at the end of this track that I can catch that loop on the fly when I realize I need a loop. And I want some keys to do that. So check out what's happening over here in the loop section. And I'm doing this workshop in Live 10 to make sure everybody who's on an older version of Ableton can actually still do this. You could do it in Live 12, but I wanted to show you in 10. Key mapping mode. The loop switch, we have the L key. That's L, it's not number one. On the po position set, we have J, and loop length, we have K. So I can turn my loop on and off. 
you can see the loop brace turns pink, the same color as the clip, it turns on and off with L, and then J and K are gonna set the loop length. Let me show you with an example. J, K. So when you turn the loop on, it jumps back to where it was. And when you want to set the loop, you can change it with J and K. Make a little loop, play with some effects. So let's let this play through to the end of the track. Pretend we're just listening to this jam, and I'm going to loop those last four bars. Make sure my EQs are on. Okay, it's coming up. I can see I'm near the end of the track. Uh, 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 J. K. Now I just made a loop right here at the end of the song, so I can go over to my one of my other tracks. I pretend I'm starting already a minute in. I don't want to make you listen to the whole intro of the progress track. One, two, three launch it with the crossfader on the right. Go to deck two, cut the bass. Deck one, cut the mids. Now I've got a cool little mix where deck one is playing the lows and highs, like that beat loop from the track Megan. Deck two is playing the vocal part with the mids and highs. Can cut the highs on deck two. So when the hi hats come in on deck one, we have a bass line and a beat with a harmonic loop coming from the old track that just keeps looping as long as we want. Then I crossfaded over, saw that there was a breakdown coming, and activated the mid range EQ on the track called Progress. Again, what are we doing? I wanted to make a cool mix where I could play with my EQs, blend the two tracks together, like braiding two tracks together. And I needed a little extra record on the track called The One because that track was gonna end. How long is this song? Two minutes, two minutes. What if, um, what if I wanna use the intro loop from this track and make a remix on the fly? You know, what if I just think it's a cool intro and I don't actually wanna even play the track? Well, looping can work for that too. Let's make a loop at the intro. So pretend we're listening to progress. We're in a, I don't know, tech house kind of a set. Now I'm gonna move the crossfader over here. Pretend that you're listening in the headphones. So you hit the Q switch, listen in the headphones on your DJ mixer or something. That's a different lecture. The one, we're gonna launch the track and immediately hit J to start loop. Yeah, I had to hit that a couple times to get loop right at one, at beat one bar one, and K. Now I have a two bar loop with this intro thing happening. And in my crossfader. And since I have a loop in place, I can launch the loop. When that track is in the breakdown, what about? Maybe I transpose it down to harmonic mix a little bit. We're in the breakdown. I'm using Q and W to see where we are in the tracks. This beat's gonna drop at this little riser. Another fun thing you can do here is use the up and down arrows to move your loop around different sections. So maybe after this next section, I'm just gonna move loop forward. So when the little tambourine sound came in, I moved to the lyric section the one. And now I can go fully into this track on 
the jam called Progress. So again, what did I do? I took the intro from this track called The One. It's an eight bar intro. So I made a four bar loop and mixed it in with the track called Progress. Then when I got to the breakdown of this, um, the, let's say that deck one progress is the main song. When I got to the breakdown, I took my loop. I used the up arrow on the keyboard. And this is a universal key command. You don't have to map this one. I used the up arrow to move the loop brace so that the remix track, the one, just it's just a vocal loop playing. So that's how I do live looping with J, K, and L and make it kind of fun. Now I want to show you a mistake to avoid because I have found out the hard way what happens if you do this wrong. Watch, I'll do the mistake right now and then you'll see why it's a mistake. Let's say I wanna make a loop at the intro. I'm gonna hit J and start at bar five. Now if I hit L. Oops, I just turned my loop off. You have to do the keys, you have to set the loop position and the loop length, because if you don't, you could get a really long loop or something that doesn't actually loop. Let me show you this again the wrong way. So loop is off, I'm gonna start the loop brace in a second. Doom, 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 doom. Loop automatically came on. I'm trying to make a four bar loop and I hit L, oops. I turned the loop function off and I didn't get the loop and that's not gonna work. So make sure when you're doing it that you actually hit the loop start. Let's see if we can do another mistake. I think there's some interesting mistakes. I think if you hit K, oops, I just took this really long loop and made it end here and the track is not being heard and the view is all, is all messed up. So um, you can't hit the K switch on the length. You gotta put your start marker in first, then set the loop length to get this to work properly. So that takes a little bit of practice, but you can get it done. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a advanced thing to show you how I use clips when I'm looping. So let's start with a four bar loop. This is the one intro. Command D, duplicate. Now I'm gonna hit this and go up. So I have a, another loop that's here. Command D, duplicate. Move the start marker here, turn loop off. So when I launch the track. Okay, I got the beat in. Duplicate. And I want this start marker. Right here. And let's do one more and make, um, turn on the loop, up arrow, get it happening down at the end of the track. This is an end loop. Intro one, intro two, Drop one, drop two. Now what I have is a way to play through different parts of the song. So I have different, this is like hot cue points. I made something, I call this a clip stack. It's basically one song cut into different scenes and every clip, notice the start marker is at a different point in the song. So when I launch these clips using my handy keyboard keys, I can fly through song parts of the song and get to the main sections that I want to get to. The intro, the drop, the ending loop. Maybe I, I could even cut this loop to that very ending point. So when I'm here at the end of the song, if I want to jump back and play the whole song again, I can do that. Or if I want to like loop the lyrics on top of a new beat, I can do that. This is the beginning of how to make disco edits or remixes on the fly or take your own tracks and perform them where each section stays in a loop until you go to the next section. For example, let's say you're playing live with a drummer, a flute player, a trumpet soloist, an MC, a singer. If you have a song with blocks where they're, they're improvising and you don't want that block to end or the song is coming to an end, you might need to cut an eight bar loop right there on the fly to make sure the solo has time to continue to the end 
So the connection to the crowd stays the same and you don't run out of music when your soloist is on stage in the spotlight. That's the worst thing you could do is to have the record stop when somebody's blowing the sickest solo of their life or flowing a, flowing a verse. Like they're going to be pissed if that happens. So live looping is super cool and super handy. Ableton is really good at doing it and playing with scenes in session view is how you can set up your projects in advance to have tracks broken down in chunks. Let's just see what happens um, with this track, Droplets. This has no lyrics. Let's move the crossfaders so we can hear it. Maybe when this drops at bar 17, I'm gonna start hitting the one and hear what happens. Came in with the end loop. I'm using transpose to mix harmonically. That's probably another topic we should do in detail more. I want to go to that part with the lyrics. And that's uh, minus four. I better pitch all these to minus four so they're consistent. Okay. Q and W to see where we are in the tracks. Cut the bass out of the one. Cut the highs out of the one. Let's cut the mids out of the original. I mean, out of the Droplets track. I can play around with this all day. Where are we in droplets? We're coming towards a breakdown. Maybe in the breakdown, I'll restart that little lyrical loop. Kind of just make it more interesting. That's kind of nice timing. The verses on the drop are lining up with sections and droplets because they're on eight bars and 16 bars. Breakdown coming here. And after another four bars, I'm going to go back to a drop section. Let's try the drop two. Turn the loop on and leave that going. EQ is on deck one. Crossfader coming over. Drop the mids for a full experience of the track called Droplets. So what I was trying to show you right there was live remixing a track using the lyrics from a track called The One and an instrumental beat from one of my own. This is something that is a really good way to play instrumental music that's new music and introduce it to a crowd along with something familiar that they recognize. So if you're in a, um, a club situation where it might be like a commercial setting or uh, like a bar where people know pop music, it's really, really fun to take pop songs that you have warped and chopped into sections and introduce them on top of underground music. People love it. They hear they hear music they know and recognize so they can sing along and go woo, and they hear fresh dope ass bass lines and beats they've never heard before and they like it even more. And it's like the best of both worlds. I did this a lot when I was DJing in like a youth hostel or a bar and grill kind of a setting where people are having burgers and beer and they're like, it's not, it's a kind of mainstream audience. I would play Rihanna remixes. I would play Radiohead um, and like put them together with underground electronic music that people had never heard before. And it was really, really a good fit. And Ableton makes this super easy. You do have to do a little bit of preparation to decide what tracks you're gonna play, warp them and chop them up into sections. But Ableton does it, gives you the tools to do that in a very cool visual way with Session View. So you can play non-mainstream music in a unique way and bring, uh, bring cool influences into your set. So what did we do today? We talked about um, the basic process of beat matching using tap tempo with the T key and the metronome on and off with the M key and nudge or pushing your tempo faster and slower with Z and X on 
the nudge. What is that exactly called? It's called phase nudge. Phase nudge down, phase nudge up. And for any DJs that are used to like playing with a platter, phase nudge down is like backspinning on a CDJ in CD mode or in vinyl mode, just dragging your finger just a little bit on the edge of a real, a real vinyl turntable. Uh, and then phase nudge up is like pushing the label a little bit or just kind of like um, pitch shifting it up. But phase nudge is temporary, pitch shift is permanent. So phase nudge is a temporary thing where you just scooch it a little bit and then it slows down again. Uh, by the way, when I'm actually mixing with a controller, I map two knobs to the tempo. So let's see if we can do this with push so that I have a rough control and fine control on my BPM. Push is waking up, there we go. MIDI mapping. Oh, that's already mapped to something else. Can I do that right now? No, I need to do this in a different way. Uh, with a MIDI controller, when you can map your knobs to, I guess I'm not in user mode. User mode active. So one controller on song tempo rough and one on song tempo fine, of course. Never actually done that with push. Now, uh, I can fine tune the BPM in tiny increments. I don't want these mappings and I don't want to be in user mode on this. The point is that uh, when you are beat matching, sometimes you need to change the tempo in a small amount and have it stay there, like less than one BPM. So it really helps to have a knob on this fine tuning parameter that you don't see in regular, like, <laughs> live view. It just looks like the BPM is right there. But watch when I enter mapping mode, you see tempo down here in the left corner, tempo coarse and tempo fine. You can set a MIDI controller to go in like less than one BPM to really fine tune in your BPM when you are beat matching with someone else. And you don't wanna get stuck on stage not being able to beat match. It's embarrassing and it sucks. So it is uh, 1234. I wanna keep these live streams short and uh, get to the point on things. So today I wanted to just basically show you how I do beat matching from Ableton out to another device and um, some stuff about live looping with the key commands J, K, and L. And again, to get those in live, look at clip view, enter mapping mode, and we had loop position to start where you wanna start your loop, the length to control how long your loop is gonna be with K, and then the loop switch on and off with the key L to recall the music back to the loop or turn your loop on and off when you want to. So last thing is, let's just review warping, which is actually kind of like beat matching. How is warping like beat matching? Well, what we're gonna do is listen to a piece of music and get the Ableton metronome beat matched to this track, okay? Now the title of this track has a BPM in it. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. And this has a kind of a difficult intro. It's a good track to practice warping because it's easier to warp when you have the beats set. So for a track like that, set the start marker right on an actual beat. So you know that live is gonna be listening to the beats, not just like the strings. Now I can feel the beat in my body. I know where the tempo is. Let's beat match it. This is dub, this is not 134 BPM. Boom, boom, boom. So what I do is I unwarp the track, play the raw audio file, just like it's on a DJ set from somebody else or on a vinyl record or whatever. And I tap tempo to get the right tempo of where the music's happening. Just tap the T key. It looks like it's around 67, which is half of 134. So I guess there was somebody on time with that label. I don't know if it's exactly 67, it doesn't really matter to me. Let's turn on the metronome and check. So what we're doing now is we're gonna play the track again, not warped. We're gonna turn on the Ableton metronome and see if the BPM of the metronome are synchronized with the track. Metronome on and play. And you gotta listen and let it go for a few measures to see if it drifts. Sounds like it might be a little bit fast. The metronome is a tiny bit creeping ahead of the beat. Let's slow this down with phase nudge.
And I don't know, I'm gonna call it 67 for live. It is staying synchronized. So now what we can do is turn on the warp switch. Ableton says the segment BPM at 67. Is that the word segment? Yes, that's live's guess at the, at the tempo. If you buy a track on Beatport and it tells you the BPM, you could just type that in and hit warp. Not gonna guarantee it'll work, but that's the right idea. Now we need to get all that whole intro warped and everything else. I think the intro is probably nine bars long. Let's put the start marker back at bar one, beat one. I'm gonna find the first sound, double click, do set 1.1 here and get the start marker there, which means when this music starts, Ableton's metronome is gonna start. That's almost impossible for Ableton to warp all that stuff because it's not really on the beat. I can feel that that's happening. And that came in. I want to count this. Let's see if this matches. 67 when it's not warped. That first part is not in a, a rhythm. It's an improvised thing. The actual beat starts right there. You can't do this visually. You really have to listen and feel for where the beat happens. Oh, and then it came in right there. So let's hit the warp switch and set the downbeat on this zero crossing here, because that's where I felt the music, like musically start. The beginning was this improvised kind of string intro thing. This is where I got the first rhythmic pulse of a melody going with a harmonic change. That was not four bars, but okay. Now you can see live is a little bit off with the beats. There's the kick drum and the four is a little off. So we need to change that. The metronome is a little bit ahead. So let's help out Ableton and take that kick drum, double click here to put a warp marker, drag it back to where we know the bar line is, put the mouse where it turns into a little speaker like that and click to play. We want the metronome to click exactly on the beats. Now that we are pretty good with the intro, let's do this and warp the whole thing. So I put the mouse on a warp marker, right click and do warp from here. Let's do, um, let's do warp from here. I think that automatically did it. It didn't put any warp markers in. There are other options. If you have a track that's, uh, that is that is electronic music and you know it was produced on a sequencer, then you could do warp from here straight or you could use the actual warp from the BPM it is. You could do start at 67. I like this for music that comes from like a band or a live source because it's saying that it starts at 67 but it might drift. Now here's where this gets exciting. Remember up here we were doing different song clips to start at different times? As we're warping, let's put in warp markers in places where we're gonna want the track to drop or do something. I hear the drums came back in there. This was a, a breakdown, right? And I wanna know where does the beat come back in? So I'm gonna put a warp marker where the beat comes back in so I can see it and make a clip that starts there. Kick drums in. So it looks like bar 31. Oh, look at that. Just like measure four, the kick drum's a little bit off. Ableton drifted a little. You gotta make sure the track is warped all the way to the end because if it's not, then when you're trying to beat match, it's gonna sound awful. 
So let's get some warp markers at the ending part to make sure that this is gonna be crisp on the beat all the way to the end of the jam. Sounds like that's the end of the kick drum beats. So let's put a warp marker there and drag that forward. Now, everything in between is gonna be on the beat. Let's just check and make sure. See, that's pretty darn close. You could drag that just a little bit. Put the mouse on the warp marker, hold the shift knob to get it just right where you want it. That's a cool little break. And let's see how this gets into the breakdown over here. With some dub effects. That bass line looks like it's right on there. And there's our opening. So now what I like to do is make a clip stack. So we're gonna have one track with that ambient opening. That's a fun loop. Let's um, And what I'm doing is making a four bar loop of this intro section. I think I'll do it like this. I'm playing with it a little bit because this is a non-tempo sound. And I want just that loop. So anyway, okay, so there's intro. Now we've got the other intro part where it's like harmonically pulsed. And this loop ends with a riser. So it would sound really good on top of another track. That, that cymbal crash is gonna introduce another beat. Let's make another scene where the beats actually start. Bar five. Or let's drop it here where the uh, where the bass line comes in. So now we got bass. So we could have intro one, intro loop, bass drop. Now I'm relying on the color to remind me what the name of the track is. I do this where I just rename the clips. Now what other what other parts of the song are happening? How about this breakdown? I'm using my mouse to go quickly on here, but you could do all this with just uh hitting the J and K keys. Let's make, no, not 16, eight bars. Now I've got a loop with some skank chords happening. I wanna cut a scene where I can keep those skank chords without beats, so let's make that shorter. Uh, the kick drum starts at bar 29. Okay, now I have a loop of melody and chords. I'm just gonna call that skank chords. We're gonna wanna have a drop after that part, so let's go to this warp marker. Now it's really easy to make a bunch of different scenes with a bunch of different sections because I put warp markers where the song sections are. So now I can start from right there. Let's call that, I don't know, drop two, drop two, and another one for drop three. And is there an ending loop on here? If you have any questions, um, let me know in the chat. 
I'm happy to answer some stuff about how this template works or how to do some DJ operations using Ableton. Let's go with this. Baseline and melody. That's always good for a remix. Two bar loop right there. Maybe we don't want that snare hit though. So what if we do a two bar loop like that? And I want my warp marker, I mean my start marker to be there. So this ending loop, now I can launch this. Now I can launch this. And get a bass line with melody. What if I do this together with some beats? Oh, my tempo is down at 67. I forgot that I beat matched this track at 67. How do I solve this problem? What I wanna do is play a track in the 120 BPM range and remix it with some skank chords from this one. Well, I could change this one to half tempo, but instead I think I'm gonna take all these clips that I just made. Now I know why this was set to 134 BPM at the beginning. Um, this little double and half time thing, crossfader lift. I hit that 2x switch to change this clip twice as fast so that when I set the tempo up to, let's say 128, that end loop still sounds correct. I'm just kind of telling Ableton it's like double times to the half time. Very relevant to Grimes on stage when Rekordbox had the wrong BPM set in uh, the DJ set. And now I have over here, let's get those beats up. And this track I'm going to make a loop at this track that just has beats going on so I can get that melody thing happening. Okay. Basic loop of bass and drums on deck two. And deck one is a little out of sync, so let's get deck two in here and see if we can bring in that skank chord. Now I'm just kind of fooling around doing stuff like how I would build a DJ set to have some fun with it. Can I launch this skank chords thing and have it fit? I've got a clip that's got a start marker and a loop. It's on deck one, ready to launch deck one using the nine key at the right moment. I think on deck one, I want to cut the bass and just keep the mids and highs. Now I can hear that piano a little bit better. Maybe deck two, I even cut the mids. Dropping some bass over there. What if we go through the rest of that remix track? I'm gonna have to set all these tracks manually to the right tempo. Double time. This is what you do in record box <laughs> before you get on stage. Making sure that, that Ableton knows to play this track back at the range of 128 instead of halftime 160. So now I got a drum loop going with low end and highs on, on deck two. Deck one, I'm free to move through and see what happens. Ambient loop. Remember that reverse symbol? That was a fun, fun sound. Now I'm bringing in the snare taps from deck one. What if, um, What if, just for curiosity, 
Let's bring in the lows on deck one, cut the lows on deck two, and just have like the... Just the hi-hats. So now we've got this slow dubby track with a faster beat coming in. So you could mix the other way where you start with the dub version, slowly remix in faster jam. What else we got? Skank chords. I think we played with that. And the ending loop. Yeah, those all work. So what did we do for a review of warping? I took a track that had an unknown BPM and unwarped it. Let's just copy this one and say new track. Quick review, when you have a new piece of music and you don't know what it's gonna do, set the warp, set the start marker where the beats start so you can actually tap tempo on the metronome and not on some ambient intro. And just play the music and listen to it. Turn on your low EQ. Uh, by the way, in this template, I have keys mapped so I can see the different parts. I can see the EQs, I can see how long is left in the music. So you get a new track, you play it, listen, tap tempo in live, turn on the metronome to check that you're in the right zone. Then you hit the warp switch and move your warp marker to get it warped. I know that's uh, a lot to memorize if you're just kind of like watching. The best way to do it is to learn by doing it. And the best way to learn is to get this Ableton template that has instructions built in. This will teach you about how to launch these tracks, use the controllers to go up and down, use the start and stop keys to fire off tracks when you want to, so that you can bring in tracks from your own music library and actually play a DJ set only using the mouse for crossfading. Mouse over here, mouse over there. At the same time, I can pull up the EQs for my kill switches. So I've got the mids on deck two, lows and highs on deck one. Make a nice little blend. Sneak it over and drop the bass like that. You get to do this in the project. There are instructions. Now let's learn about the crossfader. We have deck one on the left side assigned to A and deck two on the right side assigned to B. That's not me talking on video. I actually recorded instructions inside this project to tell you what to do. Okay, this is gonna be fun. What I want you to do is select the next scene down and launch both tracks using the nine and zero key at the same time. You're gonna hear two pieces. Okay, so you get audio instructions that tell you what's going on. You get instructions in the sidebar on the right of what to do, like press the tracks. We get some review. Quick review, what did we learn so far? Well, so I wanna make sure you learn this stuff and you learn by doing it inside live. And you can get this template. It's available on Gumroad and I'm gonna show you where to get it in just one second. We also talk about using EQ in your mixes. I have the A key and the S key on the EQs with three kill switches so you can actually mix your EQs while you're DJing with the crossfader. And then we talk about the strategies of mixing with cutting the bass, going back and forth between the two decks. How much time is left? Well, you don't want to run out of music when you're DJing because then the track stops, you look stupid and you're standing there with a microphone trying to apologize. So when you are playing, you need to know how much time is left. We do that with Q and W to see the clip view and you can actually see how much time is left. And now you know about live looping your music with some other keys, J, K, and L to cut loops and check out what's going on in the tracks. This is, uh, I call these session lessons. You do them in session view, you get a lesson. There are audio instructions, hands-on activities and examples of what to do. Finally, we put it all together. You get four audio tracks right here to play a little mini mix set. And there's even some secret master effects to play with on the D key. I love playing with effects. They're really fun with the transition and it gives you something to do when you're playing a long jam and you wanna get creative. So this is all available on Gumroad and I can show it to you right now. Here is my Gumroad page, store.mixatexture.com and I'll put the link in the comments on this video or actually in the description on this video, I think it's already there. So you go to 
store.mixatexture.com. You can see the Ableton Live DJ template right up here for $25. That's an amazing deal for this template and the lesson built in. It's kind of like if you had a one hour tutor come into your house, opening up live, sitting next to you, showing you where to put the mouse, and then teaching you how to DJ with this stuff. So you click in here, there is a little preview of what's in the set. Quick description of what's going on. Uh, all I really wanna show you here is the um, system requirements. Oh, they're up here on the right. What's included? Two decks, crossfader, three band EQs, the effects rack, audio files, built-in tutorial, stereo output is all you require. You don't need a big interface or a complex mixer. You can do it just with a laptop and the headphone output. You don't need any MIDI controllers. You can do it with your mouse and your fingertips on the keyboard of your laptop to play a really good DJ set for a crowd with music you like, and that's all you need. You can actually do this with live. Now, the requirements creatively are that you don't answer the phone. Shit, I want to talk to her too. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> the requirements are you warp your tracks. So you have to know your music and warp your music when you bring it in, and then you can build a DJ set to play with. And it requires Live 10 Suite or newer. So if you're down with that, click the button, add to cart, $25 for this DJ template with the built-in hands-on lesson. You download a live pack, double-click, open it up, and get basically what you see on the screen here today. This new stuff on the bottom, I just built for the, uh, I built all this for the lesson. But everything up top is inside this Ableton template, which I would love for you to play with and hear about how you like it. I love teaching, and I can't possibly do one-on-one -on -one lessons with all the people who want to learn. So instead, I build hands-on hands -on session lessons inside live where people can play with the stuff, get some instructions, do it, and make sure they're doing it right. That's what it's all about. I'm Steve Knotts here in Pittsburgh, East Coast time zone. If you have a question, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, we might be in two different time zones. And thank you so much for watching. We didn't get uh, comments right now. I know I'm doing these kind of pop-ups, but uh, the last pop-up we did got like 2,000 views on replay. So I know you're out there. I know you're watching. I'm gonna get over to my streaming screen and stop the scream, <laughs> scream, stream. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot for watching everybody. Next stream is gonna be on Friday when I'm doing some, uh, a workshop on how to build tracks in Session View. Today we were looking at clip stacks where we take a DJ track and chop it up into pieces. We can do that with a whole song in Session View so you can jam and play your music live to find out the right length of track and when to bring in the breakdown and when to bring in the drop, tweak your effects live. It's really a lot of fun. We're gonna do that on Friday, same time, noon on YouTube. Hope to see you there.